I want to talk a little bit about decision making at um, Bridgewater. I mean, what is the, by and large, what is the overarching process you use for decision making? Is it we have a decision to make, we're going to get in a room and we're going to talk about it, or is there something something that we're not seeing to this? Well, it's it's it, it's um, pretty much we have a decision making, we get in the room to do it. But the, what starts to be different from that is that rather than thinking about what our decision is, we spent more time thinking about what our criteria for making the decision is. So walk me through that a little. Give me like, um, can you give me an example of how you would how you would go about doing that? Yeah, you have. Um, uh, currency crisis, you have a balance of payments problem. Rather than decide, should we sell the currency or not sell the currency? We say, what are our criteria? And then we go back into all the times in history that that thing happened. Remember I said, like, everything happens over and over again? Yeah. And if you could decide what species it is right. and have principles for dealing with that species, then you know how to deal with it best. So that's the exercise of, of saying, okay, what are our criteria for making decisions? Because if we can agree on those criteria, and then when there's disagreement, rather than making disagreement about the action, you say, what is the disagreement about the criteria? You can test the criteria. Because if you disagree on the criteria, the decision, or if you agree on the criteria, the decision basically makes itself. Right. How do you go back and correct if you're wrong? Well, same thing. You know, you experience, okay, I'm wrong. So this is pain plus reflection equals progress. So you look at, I'm experiencing the pain, okay? Now calm yourself down and say, okay, what would I have done differently? And again, I, what I do like to do is look at all the cases in which that thing happened before. What happened differently to gain the perspective of the cause-effect relationships? And you do that. You love your mistakes. I mean, love the, you don't love the outcomes of your mistakes, of course, but you realize that the connection is it's a feedback loop, you know, so that you get that mistake, meaning that you have to then learn. I, as I say, you know, there are five steps to success. Okay, first, your goals. You want to have audacious goals. You have to know what the goals are. Second, on your way to your goals, you're going to have your problems, your mistakes, yeah. okay? Okay, so you have to identify and not tolerate your problems. Then, third, you have to diagnose your problems to get at their root cause. Okay, root cause may be your weaknesses or somebody else's weaknesses or maybe the mistakes. You got to diagnose them deeply. So once you have the diagnosis, then you have a fourth step, which is design what you're going to do differently in the future. And then once you have that design, then the fifth step is you got to do it. You have to follow through with those results. And you keep doing that, and it produces this looping, as I'm calling, this evolutionary process. So it's that process that, that we call it this five-step process that we're always living by. So mistakes instinctually cause us to change. My whole attitude, our whole attitude about mistakes has changed dramatically. Um, it's like um, mistakes... Um, trigger puzzles. And the, and the puzzle, if I solve the puzzle, I get a gem. Yeah. So the puzzle is, what would I have done differently? What, what should I do differently that would have produced a different result? That's a principle. You write down the principle. Okay, the gem is the principle that lets you do better in the future. So it's that kind of accumulation of learning and making the connection between the mistakes and the learning. That's, that's the process. The, the reflection process for you is, is that maybe the most important part of that? Or, or, or if you had to, or they're all interconnected, obviously. You, you need all of them. You need all of them. Yeah, I think the reflection is probably the most important. But if you're not designing your alternative to change, you're not getting anywhere. If you're not following through with that design, you're not getting anywhere. If you don't have your audacious goals, so that you know where you're going, you're not going to get to the right place. Because you're not really right? on a trajectory anyway. Right. So you need your audacious goals to know where you're going. 
You need to recognize your problems. You need to diagnose them to the root cause. You need to do the design of what you do differently, and you need to follow through with it.